all right, hey, there's so many people here. That's awesome. <laughs> so this lesson, uh, Meaning and Everything, is not my lesson. Um, it's actually a workshop that Master Zero has done several times for many different um, gatherings and camps. It's also an apprentice lesson that he gives to all of his apprentice apprentices. Um, so I want to start out by reading a quote by Master Zero. Um, everything in this world can have meaning. It's only when we look deeper at things and past our initial perceptions that we discover true meaning. So most of us, if not all of us, are here because we love the Star Wars lore, because we've all seen the movies. I know I grew up watching them and have been inspired by the characters pretty much my whole life. <laughs> um, so the meaning and everything lesson is about combining not just the lore, not just the fiction, but taking those things and actually finding what those things mean for you. So I closed my notes on accident. All right, so the different parts of this, I wanna talk about um, lightsaber colors. And also something I did was personalized my hilt um, robes. And if we have time, I'm not sure, there's kind of a time limit, um, talk about the fighting forms too. So I'm gonna start with the sabers. And I'm not going to go through all of the meanings of the different sabers because that's something you can find online. There's a really good YouTube video that walks through like the canon and the legends um, meanings of the different sabers. That's a great place to start. That's something I did when I was given this lesson by Master Zero. I just watched those videos and I researched online what the canon and legends meanings were of each different color. But that's just like the beginning. That's where you want to start. So for me, I grew up watching Star Wars and I absolutely loved it. I read all of the books I could get my hands on. Um, I played Knights of the Old Republic <laughs> and there was a character called Bastila. And I always thought she was super cool, mostly because she like had really cool clothes. But <laughs> um, she also had a yellow saber. It was a double-ended yellow saber. And so that was my first kind of uh, introduction to a saber that wasn't just like the yellow or blue that you see in the movies. Past that, um, I found the books. I think it's Jedi Apprentice. There's uh, it's So there's two different ones. There's one series about... Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon and there's another one that's about um, Obi-Wan and Anakin. The one that's about Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, there's a character called Tal and she also has a yellow lightsaber and I really related to her character and kind of the way that she addressed situations, the way that she responded to um, conflict and that's something that I think I was probably like 12 or 13 when I read those books and her character really stuck with me and so did the yellow saber. So when I started this lesson, I obviously, I knew that I wanted the yellow saber, but it was based mostly on those characters. I didn't have a deeper meaning beforehand. So as I started working through this lesson, I started looking at the lore, those YouTube videos and all of that. I also started journaling um, and just trying to figure out what it was about those characters, about the yellow saber that I really related to, that I personally related to in my life. So outside of the lore and the legends, um, I, I'll just read off a little bit of my lesson actually. I think I worded it pretty well. Um, So um, the Sentinels, they're the ones that are like most known for having the yellow saber. 
and they are the temple guards. That's kind of like where I, in that YouTube video, that's mostly what he talks about. Um, but the Sentinels aren't just temple guards. They're also kind of known as the Jack of all trades. So they're not only scholars and good fighters. They also, I think it, a quote from the video, he said they could also fix your speeder if you're in a bind. And that's something I really related to. Um, the main point that I came to within that is that they symbolize balance. And so for me, the yellow saber symbolizes balance. I actually didn't, so I didn't come up with as much of a connection with the yellow saber outside of what I just explained. Um, the really personal aspect of it came from building my hilt. And that's something that I did with Master Zero. Uh, I used Saber Forge and we literally just got on Zoom and we went through the website together and I found the parts that I wanted and he was there when I got them and helped me build it. Um, so I chose each individual piece of my saber and I also added to it. So I'm just going to show y'all my saber. There's the yellow blade. And then, oops, against the wall. So my hilt looks like this. And I decided I wanted to wrap it in leather. I actually, initially my thought was that I wanted to make a wooden hilt and I still haven't done that. That's actually really complicated. Eventually I want to do that. <laughs> um, but for now the leather is something for me uh, that symbolizes a connection to earth. Obviously leather is made for animals. Sorry, vegans. Um, <laughs> I also chose Saber Forge has these different um, finishes that you can get. So this is the weathered finish. And I felt like for me, relating to the Sentinels and the characters that I did, having that weathered finish shows that it's been used and it's loved and it's something that I embrace often. Um, I also added some little turquoise pieces and some little bits. These are actually from a necklace that I got when I was really young. I was in, um, I think Panama maybe, or Costa Rica. Um, and I added one to the end too. So I added the turquoise bits because my family is native. They're Muscogee Creek and there are a lot of stories about turquoise and there's a lot of uh, like native lore, I guess, behind that. Um, but turquoise is often used in ritual to promote tranquility, peace, and communication. And those are three things that I really value on my Jedi path. Um, it also, on my saber, doesn't just, uh, I don't know, my saber in general is not just a weapon for me. It is something that symbolizes my beliefs and my path as a Jedi. Um, and something that I've actually added recently, I forgot about, I added the Icelandic compass, it's called the Vegvisir, and it also has the runic alphabet. This is something that I have tattooed on me as well. Um, so I decided to name the saber Epona. Um, and that was actually much later. So I did the meaning and everything lesson and then a few months later, I named my blade, and that's something that uh, it's a traditional thing. Once you build your first weapon, traditionally you name it. And so I found that name uh, because Epona is the goddess of horses, and I have a history with horses. And I think that the experience that I had learning to ride a horse and learning to take care of horses is really the first time that I learned what balance is and not just from writing, but like that was a huge part of it. Um, but being really aware that there is an animal that you're working with that is many times your size. And if you don't work with them, if you don't have patience and compassion and understanding, that animal is not going to work with you. And so that's something I directly tied into 
my path as a Jedi. That's that's very much who I am in this community and very much what this saber symbolizes for me. Um, I also, it's something I mentioned when I first started the meeting and everything lesson with Zero. Um, I wanted to build a offhand weapon. I've always been a fan of like the two um, kind of rogue style weapons. Um, so I also decided I was going to build a cyan saber and it is incredibly bright <laughs> for some reason. Um, so it, I made this one much shorter. It's about 14 inches. And I actually cut it down. Uh, saber Forge has an 18 inch one, but I cut this one down to 14 inches um because i actually spend these sabers so this works a lot better for me um but once i had built this one um i decided on the color before i actually had the meaning of it but once i had it and i was working with it i discovered that it kind of, it's kind of a cross between the blue of a guardian and the green of a consular which is very much who I am. Um, it also symbolizes kind of a step away from the traditional. And I think that's something that's been a huge part of my path is that I don't really believe that there is a light or dark side to the force, which maybe is a little controversial. But having the saber is a little bit of a step away from that for me. Um, I believe that we get to choose that our perspective creates an illusion of duality. But the saber for me symbolizes balance as well. So with the two of them, with the yellow and the cyan, I found even more balance between them because the yellow for me symbolizes more of, when you think of yellow, you think of the sun usually. And when you think of blue, you think of something colder, more like ice. And so I've pictured my yellow saber as burning hot like the sun and my blue saber burning cold like it's made of ice. And this symbolizes for me the balance that I have found. So I really would like to hear from other folks about sabers um, and the ones that they've built and, and the meanings that y'all have found too. Let's try and it. Can I, I go first? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to talk about robes too, but honestly, like, yeah, I want to hear from y'all. So I, there is like the option where you can like raise your hand um, in Zoom. So maybe we can do that to kind of keep things a little bit more <laughs> organized and less chaotic. So yeah, um, if y'all have a saber and a meaning you'd like to talk about, let's go in order. So, Arashoka, is that how you say it? Yeah, hi. So hey. my lightsaber is an electron saber. It's a rose gold looking one. I showed it yesterday and it has a vault nut on it which symbolizes life, death, and rebirth, which is something that has been very personal on my path. I still have no idea what to name it yet, but I got it um, about a year, year ago, I think. Of course, it's a Sith Saber. Well, it's red, but technically I can reprogram it to choose any color that I want. But there was a few fonts that I got, and based on how it felt, it was based on the harmony, the uh, frequency that I wanted to emit. Um, and I am going to show you my sword. Because um, I have no idea where I put my saber and sometimes I have memory gaps. But this is Kusanagi. Um, it's a Damascus steel, very sharp part of the Saya. I'm not sure if you can see here. But um, it has a person looking on the other side. And um, to me, that symbolized being uh, 
a shaman and being mindful because on the other side it's just like different and it's got like a different looking kind of scarier guy so I'm like a guardian and um I do a lot of spiritual work but I didn't name Kusanagi until I don't know a few years later and it meant you know the whole lore of Kusanagi the sword um is cool that you can look up on your own time but I chose that based on my core based on the relationship that I have with my katana and then years later my lightsaber so um yeah that's it yeah that's awesome thank you for sharing that it's another thing that I found about the red saber too I actually know a lot of people that have a red saber and kind of Um, embracing the the concept of this lesson too is that we can base things off of the lore and what they yeah, stand for, about- but that doesn't have to be all that they are. For a lot of the people that I know that have those red sabers, the red the red color symbolizes passion, um, endurance. I think is what one of the other ones was. Uh, I don't want to speak for them, but it symbolizes a lot of things that are outside of the lore it doesn't mean that it's just a sith color necessarily yes and it was really cool that people can make those connections and the the meaning and everything is like we're jedi realists we're not in this fictional world so being able to make those connections outside of the fiction and actually apply it to our actual real life when we go out and the way that we behave and interact with people it's a really big deal and it's a huge part of who we are and why we're here. Yes, it symbolized for me my fire because I'm an Aries. And before I was a Jedi, I was a Sith. So I had a lot of my hero's journey in the Sith path. So for me, it was passion, embracing darkness and that flame and yet tempering. In my lightsaber, I chose green and blue for my backlights because it's a smart saber. Uh, so when I power it on, there's like different things which have like grounding and cooling which signify different connection with different elements so it all like flowed nicely together and stuff yeah that's great i think um master zero you are next maybe i'm here i'm trying to weave my way around all the doggies Many of you all have seen this several times. Um, When I was building my saber way back then, everybody was hung up on how cool they look. Oh, look at this one. This looks awesome. And look at this one. This looks awesome. I didn't do that. I wanted one that had meaning. And this saber kind of is where this lesson comes from. Um, I wanted parts of it to have highs and lows and weave in and out because your Jedi path is going to be, some of it's going to be high, some of it's going to be great, and other parts are going to suck. I wanted it to have a gentle curve in it somewhere, so I chose this switch section because when you progress down the path, it's got to be a slow, fluid, curving path. You can't come in and I'm doing IP and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And I'm doing this. I'm going from zero to night in three months. That's not how the path works. It's got to be slow and gradual. Uh, the grip. I wanted one that would make it a tool. And I don't mean a tool as in a weapon because this is not a weapon. This is a symbol. This is the equivalent of a Christian cross or a Jewish six-pointed star. That's what this is to me. And when I put the leather grip on it, I wanted it to be something that I would go outside and spin around or occasionally wear from time to time, which I don't do very, very often. The pommel I wanted to be so I can tell this thing's really long. It's like 14 inches. I wanted a good, fat, substantial pommel to give it balance. All of it. 
if you notice, it's got black, it's got silver, and it's got gray. The black and silver are good and bad, light and dark, whatever you want to call it. We all have all of it. No one's pure good. No one's pure bad. We're all a mix of the two. Hence the purple blade. In ye oldie movies, bad guys had red, good guys had blue. Since I don't think anyone, even in the movies, was purely good or purely bad. That means we're all a mix. We're all purple. We just, what shade of purple are you? So yeah, that's my saber. The other things I've been doing, um, each step I take, I try to alter it a little bit. So like when I got knighted, I added little gold thingy. When I made senior knight, I added another one. Um, I threw this red on there as a homage to the movies. Back in ye olde movies, they all had some red on them somewhere. Without the movies, I dare say we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. So that's just a little throwback to the movies. Um, now that I've been promoted to master, my next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, leather cord. And I'm going to put a bead on it with everybody's, all my apprentices' names engraved in them. So like, Tavi's bead will be yellow. And Rennie's bead will be purple. Marcano's bead will be white. And just have that hanging, dangly. And I can do dangly because, again, it's not a weapon. It's a symbol. And a big chunk of my path has been training most of the people in this room to some degree. I think all my apprentices were here at some point except for Morcano. But when you, when you start training people it becomes a big chunk of your life your life and your path and it fits that's it should be on there in my opinion the one thing i want to add before i pass the mic here this lesson doesn't only apply to lightsabers and robes and this should apply to everything Put a, I was thinking about it last night when I was talking with Octavia about this class. Even what comforter you're going to put on your bed. You can put a pretty flashy one there or you can put one that's comforting and warm and maybe your grandmother made it. Maybe it's your favorite color. When you surround yourself with things that make you comfortable, life gets a, lot, a little bit easier. And when you do that with everything around you, what color your car is, how you, most of you know, I just moved into this house that we've been building for several years. Where you put what rooms, what color countertops, you make them mean something to you, you'll be more comfortable and probably have a little bit happier life. Next. Yeah, I, I love the idea of thinking of a saber as a symbol and also thinking of even like the color of your car as a, a symbol is something that has meaning to you that when we have a deeper explanation for the choices that we make in our life they have more value to us night v you're next i think Uh, I can, I don't I don't know if I was next, but I can go next if you want. <laughs> You're next on the list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sweet. Um. So I got mine. I didn't build mine. I just kind of ordered it as is online. Um. It's the Vader's Vault Rival. Uh, it's kind of modeled after um, Darth Maul's lightsaber. Uh, which is like the emitter right here. But it has like the same kind of color scheme as um, Palpatine's lightsabers. Uh, I just like the look of it. I didn't really put too much thought into like you know Zero had a lot of thought in the whole design of of his lightsaber 
I just really liked the way that this one looked. Um, my lightsaber color is yellow. Um, it's not charged, so I can't turn it on right now. Um, but I liked the, the the gold inlay in the emitter and the pommel, and I thought that kind of matched up with the uh, with the coloring. And then it has like the the lights here as well, which which light up uh, yellow and white. Um, and I didn't I didn't really name it either. I thought the the rival name was pretty apt. Um, you know, one of the at least in the fictional universe, the the uh, the Jedi struggle is much just with oneself. Um, and you know, I I'm, I've worked in the gym industry so long that you know it's kind of ingrained into my head that you know the only person you're competing against is yourself. And so I thought the the rival was kind of an interesting name because it's like I am my own rival that kind of thing. I didn't, I didn't put too much thought into it, but I thought that was kind of a, a cool way to look at it. Um, and I chose yellow as my color um, because much like uh, Tavi was saying, I, I played the old Knights of the Old Republic game and I would always choose uh, the Sentinel class because they were the jack of all trades. You know, they, uh, they were pr pretty good at everything, but not, you know, masterful at any one particular thing and that's pretty much how i am in real life um you know jack of all trades master of none um and i just thought that that was you know kind of kind of an interesting thing um that translated to my to my real life so i kind of went that direction with the color um and i, I definitely agree with zero that um for us as jedi the lightsabers um they're they're no different than uh, a cross or a rosary or uh, you know any any other religious symbol that you can think of. It's the same thing. Um, it's a way to um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a it's a not show off, but I kind of show off your your faith visually to other people and just be like you know this identifies me as a Jedi, just the same way that if you saw somebody wearing a Catholic cross or anything like that, you'd be like, oh, you know, I know what's going on with them. I don't think it's any different. Um, so I don't really wear my lightsaber around because it's not super practical. Um, but I think that that would be something that I wouldn't be. I've talked to some people in the past who, who say that they're kind of embarrassed to do that kind of thing. And I, I don't really feel that way. I think it's just, like I said, it's it's no different than any, any other uh, sort of religious symbol that you could find out there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think Amelia, you're next. So um, I got the <laughs> Sentinel in KOTOR. Um, at first, I didn't really see myself as that, but um, hearing it described as jack of all trades, it makes a lot more sense because I am kind of like that. Like I have a bunch of different hobbies. Um, as far as dance, I've taken classes for a couple different styles, but never really reached advanced. Um, so because of that, I wear this um, yellow kyber crystal. It lights up. I found it on Etsy. Um, I think the creator is Godmother Artificers, something like that. Um, I have not yet gone to Galaxy's Edge. I just ordered these off the internet, but I have the yellow kyber crystal and then I just got this piece like as a display um so this my saber i have it set to the yellow um when i turn it on it scares my cat he runs and hides <laughs> i think it's the noise um for me lightsaber is about like showing up and doing the work for me it's about discipline and so i like i also see it as like a movement meditation 
Um, I've gotten back into doing yoga, um, trying to do yoga and meditate every day. And I add saber onto that again, like add some movement meditation, um, to teach myself to be more mindful of what I'm doing as I go through the movements instead of just like, like being in my head or overthinking everything. And one thing that I've actually noticed when I was taking jazz dance back in high school and learning our performance choreography was that if I was too conscious of the moves, then I would mess up repeatedly. But if I just got out of my head and did it, then I would do it well. And I try to hang on to that, like, when I'm doing other things. So, yeah, for me, um, Sabre, it's it's movement meditation and, like, a lesson in mindfulness and trying to be more one with the force in that way. Yeah, that's awesome. It's awesome when you bring up um, kind of the movement meditation as well. That's something that I try to engage with pretty much every day. Um, and part of the apprenticeship lesson that Zero gives is to talk about uh, combat styles. And that's a whole other giant topic. Um, but something that I learned through the meditation um, with my saber is that I connected super hard with uh, Sterisu which is the same style that Obi-Wan uses. And it has a lot to do with defense and disarming and neutralizing rather than attacking. And that's another part of this apprenticeship lesson that I really connected with. And it's definitely been something that I've grown a lot from. Um, yeah, I feel like that's something that's super important if you have a saber to kind of work with that tool to find some sort of meditation, whether it's a sitting meditation where you're just holding your saber and you're focusing on something like the doctrine or something going on in your life and clearing your mind. Um, for me, definitely that movement meditation and coming out with my own kind of routine, um, spinning that saber has been deeply life-changing and just such a cool thing to figure out. Having um, gone from sorry having gone <laughs> from dance and like trying to learn different like martial arts style I see it a lot as a dance like when I'm doing those moves I feel like I'm dancing and even like when I was taking some of my dad's karate lessons like he he teaches karate um he had said that dance had helped me improve my balance quite a bit and so for me dance and martial arts are just so intertwined mm -hmm. yeah for sure i'm not sure who was next because zoom just like jumped around um so there's three of y'all i am hand. pretty sure it was uh novice texas druid all right <laughs> you want to go next Jude? oh uh, sure i don't mind going let me get hi hello everybody uh i did not build mine either this is one that i ordered but i've, I've actually talked about this in my lessons a little bit i did a mystery saber just to see what i would get what the what the universe would send to me uh y'all been talking about the names of them a little bit tonight and i thought it was funny uh this is a ultra sabers they call it the initiate and this was my first step into, um, I'd barely even seen Star Wars or anything like that. I just thought, hey, light up sword was neat. Uh, it's just a, a very basic plain hilt. And a, what, I, what I talked about in some of my lessons was originally I saw it as uh, elegant and simple. And over recent meditations have learned that it's, a basic starting off point looking for the flourishes that I need in my life, the the finishing touches, the the customizations like a lot what a lot of you have done. It is a, a blue saber, 
which I thought was interesting. Uh, not only is that my favorite color, but in color theory, it's the the guardian, the protector, and that's a role that I filled a lot in my life. I'm talking about doing uh, meditations. Lucy, get off the computer. Sorry, cat. Uh, doing like the movement meditations and things like that. I actually am part of a uh, a lightsaber fencing league. So I do actual uh, combat with mine. I'm out there doing a full contact. And I do take it to, to work with me and take it. I have a special backpack that has a lightsaber holder on the side. And so I, I don't wear the lightsaber. I just put it on my backpack, but I take it with me uh, pretty much everywhere I go. And I think of it you know, in terms of the symbolism, kind of like the uh, the Kirpan for a uh, for, uh, seeks uh, it's a reminder to me of my duty to other people to protect people where i can and to to step up when somebody needs to step up and intervene yeah don't you have two sabers i Just... actually have a whole bunch of sabers but <laughs> i have <laughs> i have two of them with me right now that's, yes that's the one that's the one that you you relate to the most then. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the the very first one, and then the other one that I've written about recently is the the Balin Skull Tempest, and that's that's the one that kind of brought me to that that realization about needing more form and kind of being a work in progress. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. I'm not sure if Davi or Roz was next, but whoever's ready. Davi seems to have left. So Roz, do you want to go? Yep. Let me, let me show you. Nobody has seen this saber before in their lives. I know it. Um, let me see. Can you see me? Yes, you can see me. All right. Behold. Okay. Get it inside of the frame. It's really huge for like no reason. Um, because I'm very small um as a person. And so I don't understand why it's so However, um this saber, um actually I've been saber for similar to, to Tavi. Um Zero helped me build it. Um uh well, so I'll just go down the uh, down the the ideas about the saber. So a lot of it is um, it's like um, it's it's designed to help me like uh, with my grip because um, I mean it doesn't have any leather or anything, but there's a portion of it that's just like uh, uh, has a lot of like traction on it. And it's designed to help me with my grip um, because I try to spin this thing around on occasion not this one but usually i try to spin it around on occasion um then it's weathered um because i've been on the path for um 13 years 13 years now so i figure uh i'm one of the ones who might have a weathered saber um but the most important thing about this thing is its color Let's see, it is orange. Uh, nobody can see that because it's here, here, there you go. It is orange. I realize the canon has changed a lot um, with regards to orange and what that means. Like there's some expectations like orange, you know, orange kybers are weak kybers. So maybe the people who carry, um, they're weak, they're fake. Um, they're like you know not real kyber they're kind of weak so like i've 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 gone through that i've experienced people saying that i'm weak and or fake or try to mask and then don't be successful um but <clears throat> my big thing is that um orange is the color of the the diplomat it's the person with the the capability to to move between um two different ideas, like the purple, right? 
the orange is the color of the diplomat. So uh, it's a leadership um color. It's the one that uh, Yaddle uses. She's a quiet leader. She just kind of does what she needs to do. Um, it's the one that Plow Coon used for a couple of times. You know, Plow Coon is one of my favorite Jedi. Um, but that's the color that resonates with me most. Uh, so that's what I've got. I love how you've made your own, like your own lore for the color, basically, because that's one that we've only recently been introduced to. And I've heard you talk about this before, even like the Ahsoka series came out. And yeah, yeah that's, that's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Dabby. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> so I guess we'll start off with um, my saber. I ordered this um, online, not from any special place, just from Amazon. Uh, and I ordered it because I liked it. So that was the reason. Um, and it was something I, I've wanted for a long time. I really felt attached to Obi-Wan and Luke Skywalker's uh, lightsaber in the movies as a child it was just something that always fascinated me by the look of it and it was something i always wanted uh even as a child so i've had i had many toy lightsabers uh so anyway to get this was kind of exciting and also it doesn't have the big uh bumpy button which is important for me because i do like to spin and do all sorts of stuff with my saber it is still quite heavy though i'll say that it does have a lot of weight to it so uh, i have another saber upstairs which is a little lighter <clears throat> which honestly when you switch between any weapons, you can notice the difference of using them. So I, I really invite anybody to pick up anything, a stick or whatever, and do the same things. And you'll see the difference of, you know, weight distribution when you're trying to wing it around. You'll be like, wow, you know, maybe I should try different things so I can master different weapons just in case in a scenario I don't have my lightsaber, which is uh, kind of where I was going with, with that is that uh, to me, lightsabers are expendable. Um, they do have deep meaning. Oh, it's talking to me. Uh, they do have deep meaning, but uh, to me, it's something that can be lost, just like anything. And I've had a lot of really important items in my life, uh, things that I've loved uh, and and had attachment to, if you would, uh, and they've been lost, uh, you know, for no no reason to myself, or you know, maybe they've broken, or they become old or fragile, uh, or even just outdated. So to me, I don't have much attachment to things like that because I always think that. It could be lost and I might need a new one. So today this is my lightsaber and it has meaning, but tomorrow perhaps its journey and my journey don't align and it goes on another journey and that's okay too. So um, so that's my lightsaber. The color of my lightsaber I chose is green um, because uh, green is an important color to me for many reasons. On um, When I started my journey as a Jedi or a mystic, um, I was called to a green crystal, which is important to me, which I wear. Um, I wrapped this myself and uh, made this obviously. So um, it's green and green to me symbolizes a lot of things like earth, but also unconditional love. And the most important part of my crystal is unconditional love. And uh, this crystal has allowed me to connect with the force in ways that I never really thought were possible. And I've been able to uh, really deepen my connection spiritually. So. Uh, that's why green to me was my lightsaber color because it is very spiritual and uh like i said uh earth related to earth things like uh, animals and nature and such which i i feel very called to uh, aside from that i have a robe which i have on i went and threw it on um i got it this this year it is oh, wait Tommy, we haven't gotten the robes yet <laughs> oh oh sorry so yeah, I'll I'll leave that for later. And I definitely um, want to talk about that, but I want to make sure everybody needs to talk about their sabers first. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then yes, hopefully we'll so have time. I, I think we're we're good on my saber. I think that's it. Cool. Think Thanks for sharing that. And I, no I love problem. the connection you made with the green too. That's yeah. There's so you much more to it. Like that, uh, during the I think summer camp or something, but that's something that like, that's a connection that I didn't make with my own sabers. But once you said that, I started to make even more connections with mine. Thank, it's part oh, of thank why you. I love these kind of workshops because like people share and we all get to learn even more well, and make 
connections. <laughs> like I love hearing all these meanings as well. Like to me, the colors, uh, you know, they really relate to energy centers, like in chakras or or even emotions or you know ideas and such. Like because colors do relate to a lot of things. So I see <laughs> the colors people are choosing, and I can I can see themselves and why they've chosen it. And I and I just want to say to people who who are struggling with their choice in any kind of way. Uh, just know that it's identifying you and your and and who you are and what you've been through, and that's okay to acknowledge that. Well, so if it's a red saber, you know, for an example, it's okay to admit that that you've gone through things that have given you that power to be empowered by the red saber. You know, it's what we do today with our actions that matter, not what we've done. In the yeah, past. I love that. Yeah, and being passionate is not a bad thing at for all. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. Um, who else hasn't shared that would like to? So I'm, uh, you guys got to see my color. That's really the only important thing about mine. Um, I don't even know which one I got. I just bought one. And the only thing I wanted to make sure was that it, one, worked. And two, <clears throat> I could change the colors. Because I wanted purple. And some days and then other days I wasn't sure. Um that said i found that i can't really change the color that easily and when it does just fall out of sync it hates me so i don't know whatever um but purple has a few different meanings one the person who was my training master my original training master his name is vander draconis he is considered, in my corner of the community, the um, Mace Windu of the community. So it kind of hails back a little bit to him. And then later on, over at uh, International Jedi Federation, I asked Gabe, Gabriel Caldwell, what color he thought would be the color for the Jedi Mystic. And I got... I, I was sitting there and I thought to myself, it would be purple, it would be purple, but I wanted a kind of a confirmation of what it would be. And he said purple. So um, to give you an idea of what the Jedi mystic is, it's kind of like being a, a minister or a pastor over at Temple of the Jedi Order, but not a collector. Um, you can speak that we kind of allow you to specialize in a specific religion if you want to more closer to a chaplain i suppose you could call it so um that just kind of tells you what the mystic is but purple kind of it goes in line with my history and with what i what i am uh, called to in a number of the different communities as being a spiritual leader to them a sort of chaplain. And that it doesn't have any real meaning. I'm cheap. <laughs> I love how a lot of you took a chance and just got a saber and were kind of like assigned a color almost. But you found meaning in it that, you know, I don't want to say you're embracing what the universe sent you, but maybe kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so did everyone that wanted to share about sabers get to talk so far okay so i'm going to move on to talking about robes um i'm not wearing my robes tonight because it is very cold <laughs> and my robes are meant for summer i guess i am a tropical jedi maybe but I am actually creating um, some winter robes and I have a ton of fabric that just came in today and I'm very excited about it. It's mostly black t-shirt material and black leather and like a little bit of white. Um, I don't really have a reason for that yet. I know that I bought it for a reason, but I'm not sure what that reason is yet. But there is one part of it that I definitely wanted to add to my winter robes, and that is the faux fur, um, white specifically. Um, this is the hood. It actually has uh, a little pattern on the inside, which is super cute. But um, 
adding the fur to it is a lot like my um, yellow saber, how I added the Vegva steer to it. And that's something that I've explored a lot um, throughout my Jedi path. And also before that, um, I studied biology in Iceland for six months at a time and then another three months and then another three months the next year. So I spent a lot of time in that environment and with that kind of mythology and also really related to the kind of like Viking culture type thing, mostly the myth, but I wanted to add this to my Jedi robes because that myth and those lessons I've learned from that have been a really big deal for me and they've really influenced the the route that my path have take, has taken. So a very small part of my ropes, not the whole thing. But um, I definitely, before we before I open it up for the group to start talking about ropes, I'd like to ask Master Zero if he would share his ropes and his meaning for his ropes. Okay, I'm actually going to screen share because while I'm not wearing mine, I do have a picture. Start. Okay, photos. Here we go. So these are mine. Um, I'm getting ready to go very Shrek on you guys. When I was putting them together, I realize mainly that there's just a lot of layers. Uh, when I'm wearing them, I think around my waist, I've got one, two, three, four, five layers. <laughs> and I had been watching Shrek, and they talk about, oh, I'm an onion, I got layers. So I wanted to give meaning to each layer. And much like my saber, you got black, white, and gray. And I realized on the outside, people can see me as dark, as a bit of a hard ass, as a bit of, um, I spent my whole adult life in the military. So I, I definitely got a, he's a dickhead persona. But then the further towards the inside you get, you get to know, well, maybe he's not so bad of a guy. And that's where the gray kind of comes in. And then once you really get to know me, um, like my apprentices do, they get to see the nice guy inside and how I'm generally good hearted and I really want to help people. So I made them go from the outside in dark to light. Um, if you notice the very, very innermost layer is black and that's uh, a homage to the fiction, fictional Jedi robes. Uh, usually the boots, the belt, and the innermost shirt are the same color. But what's unique about that one is it's silk. And I wanted silk to be on the inside because it's comfortable. And when you start digging around in lore, they say that Jedi's inner robes were usually silky and cottony and soft and smooth. And Sith's inner robes were rough and coarse and made out of wool or some other itchy material that would just drive them bonkers and hence feed their power and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of homage to fiction but there's also a lot of me there. And that's what I got. This back up. Stop sharing. And whoever's next. Thanks for sharing that. And that's actually um, the fabric that I just got in the mail today. It's black, white, and gray. And my reasons are very much because Zero is my training master. And I kind of stole that idea from him, but I also really relate to it. <laughs> so. Ereshuka? Let me unmute myself. So I'm a clothing designer 
and I'm a flow artist. So one of the thing, I'm a warrior and a martial artist. And so one of the things, plus I'm a Sith and training to be a Jedi. So one of the things that I like is luxury and really fine and nice yet comfortable things so that if I'm ever in a situation, I can kick somebody's butt as a last resort. Um, this is actually one of my art pieces as a clothing designer. I made this uh, here. So then I got it printed. And this is the front of my, my top layer. Now I'm gonna share a picture, but the reason why I chose course black is because black is personal power, it's strength. Also, I like obsidian a lot, and in particular, snowflake obsidian. Because obsidian has a bunch of protective properties, but also a lot of uh, filtering away the inner energies as well. So it can be used for very introspective work. Um, I have boots that are, I don't know, what do you call it, like, they have like a tread, they're very combative, but they're flat. So everything that I do, um, here's one of my tops that I'm wearing that's actually my Jedi Masters because he left it. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm just going to use it before I ship it off to him a few times, you know, once I clean it. But um, I was like, eh, this is fine. Um, Maybe you should not, <clears throat> you know, say that since uh, he'll be watching this later. I know. He already knows. I told him. I was like, you know, you left this here. Like, he's not going to mind. So I wouldn't have done it if he didn't mind. But um, these kind of shirts are what I like. They're form-fitting. They show off my muscles. But they're also breathable. Because I'm in, like, Colorado. So whether it's during the summer or the winter time, it's cold as heck. And then the weather is just bipolar. And so having something that I can move in while also having that rogue look because again, you and me, Tav Tavi, are very similar in ways, uh, different. It's it's particularly just my style so that I can move without being too cramped, but I can also look nice and stylish and look nice. So this is also another one of the things that I like to wear. It's my leather jacket. I don't like capes. I don't like tabards. I don't like the traditional outfit just because of all the layers. And um, it just doesn't meld personally with my style. So mine shows martial arts, gi tops. I look like I could kick people's butt. That's what I get a lot from people. They're like, you look like you could kick my butt. I'm done now to clarify. How do you unmute myself? <laughs> Did anyone else want to share on robes? Not to single you out, but I just noticed that Greybeard, you just joined. Hi. Hi. You just updated your robes recently, and I was just talking about mine. Um, I kind of, I just said that I was kind of copying Zero, and now I'm, I kind of copied you too with the, the fur attached to the top, but <laughs> um, I was wondering if you'd be willing to share about uh, what you were talking about with your robes and how you kind of um, came up with the style for them. You don't have to, I'll still putting you on the spot. <laughs> I had to set my camera up. It wasn't fully functioning yet. So my robes are, um, they're all homemade because I possess a lot of useful skills in modern day society. Um, I am the tailor in my house. I'm the one who does all the dress alterations for my daughters and do all my own uniforms. Um, all mine are brown, they're earth tone. They are style after tra traditional robes with the exception of the uh, wolf fur up top. Which was something that was terrorizing a buddy's farm, so sadly we had to put it down. But I used it, never let it go to waste. But yeah, my, mine are brown because I have a shamanistic faith, so it's all earth tones for me. It keeps me very well grounded. 
and they were very difficult to make when you're first learning how to sew with a sewing machine, by the way, if everybody knows. Oh gosh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. And also like you inspired me, I showed um, people earlier, it came in today, my little fur hood that I'm adding to my winter robes because I made summer robes and they're way too cold to wear when it's cold yeah. outside. <laughs> Not coastal, so I actually want that. Does anyone else want to talk about their robes? Or even uh, if you don't have robes, if you had ideas about how you want them to look or what color you want them to be, what kind of fabric you want them to be, if you want to share those ideas. I'm trying to find a photo of mine. Oh, wait. Wait, we have people with raised hands. Yay! Yeah, and I see your raised hand. Um, I don't have robes per se. I wanted something practical, so I bought um like a poncho with a nice big nice big hood. Um it's like a wool polyester blend, so it's super warm, super um, water resistant. Um, I'm a big fan of moving meditation. I'll go for like hours of walks at a time. Um, living in Oregon, it's very rainy, very cold. So I appreciate having something warm uh, that I can wear that doesn't limit my, my mobility. Um, when I think of like Jedi robes for like quote unquote, real life. Um, I think of like practical wear that still kind of has that Jedi aesthetic um, for, for lack of a better word. Um, I really think it'd be super cool to get like a custom made pair of robes uh, in the traditional Jedi style. I feel like those would be for me at least more like um, kind of like Kind of like in the, in the, you know, I've never been in the military, but, you know, in the military, they have like dress uniforms and like regular uniforms and stuff like that. I feel like the traditional looking Jedi robes would be more like uh, my my dress uniform per se. Um, and then I, I kind of want to put together a, um, a more practical, like daily Jedi outfit that I could wear with the poncho and other stuff like that. And for me, that's that's purely what it is. It's purely practical i think the the jedi robes would be more fun than anything else um but that's kind of uh that's kind of how i look at that i want something that symbolizes the the jedi and has that aesthetic from movies but something that's just really practical and useful yeah for sure that's why i keep using t-shirt material for everything that i make <laughs> let's see i think that TX Druid, you're next. Um, my, I, I did kind of the same thing like what Verheilen was talking about. Um, I actually got the idea from uh, talking with uh, Davi Carr uh, previously about buying a uh, like a poncho shawl with a hood that I can wear when I go out most places. But for my formal robes, I have a uh, medieval style long duster that's sleeveless. That's actually what I'm wearing right now. It's got a a, a deep hood on it. And uh, it's brown for the, the grounding and earth tones. It's got a green inside for my druidic background. And I actually bought it at a uh, a shop at the Ren Fair next to where I used to work whenever I lived out there. And uh, I like I like that style and it's sleeveless so I can survive here in Texas and not die from the heat. But that that's about it on that. Baby, you're muted. Yeah, you're muted, girly. I'm muted. My keyboard keeps dying. Um, I love that everybody keeps tying in the materials that they're using for their robes. 
um, according to where they're at. It's definitely something that like the lore Jedi do. Um, Davi, you're next. Hey again. Um, so yeah, I have my more formal, I, I guess, as we were saying, a uh, cloak on, which is made out of garbage material, which is kind of like a suit jacket material. So it's very thin and light, like you can, and it doesn't get any wrinkles in it ever, which is really amazing. Um, uh, it's, it's warm, so it's really cold out today. It's around freezing, and I actually wore it out today just to see how it did outside, and I was completely warm in it in this so amazingly it does keep you warm <clears throat> i'd like to get a wool one but i'm not even sure it's necessary for the amount that i wear it um because as my master verheyla mentioned i also have a poncho um which i wear out most days uh, especially on on the farm here it's wool as well and it is really warm it's warmer than my winter jacket sometimes so uh it really keeps the wind out i really like wearing it um i'm glad i purchased it and it is super um reasonable I'd like to get another one, truthfully. Uh, I also have a cloak pin, which I made because I didn't like the one that came with it. So this is out of stainless steel and some copper wire, which I wrapped on there. I It does suit my kind of aesthetic and style, which is why I, I made it like this. Um, I chose gray for my cloak, I guess, as a color and for my poncho, because to me, I'm kind of like Tavi. I don't believe that there's a, a dark or light side of the force. I think it's how we, we choose to wield it or how we choose to approach it i suppose um or how it influences us um so i like to believe that you know we ha we all make choices so the, the gray reminds me that there's always a choice to be made and i always like to make the right choice um i've kind of been a jedi my whole life i've been one of those hero types you know um forever and f finally getting a cloak on to me felt comfortable it felt right but i truthfully uh, wear the cloak when i when i um i go to give readings for people because i am a, a tarot reader and a psychic so uh, i i wear it and i now and i like to kind of put it on it makes me feel like i'm you know i'm like like for highland said the lightsaber gives you know that, that presence as a jedi i think it really is easy for people to identify you as a jedi now you know when i, when I put the cloak on and I have a lightsaber and I have a utility belt as well, which holds the lightsaber here. So I do wear it when I give readings and uh, when I go to markets now and I do uh, identify that. And uh, before I did not, I just wore my crystal and I never really had a faith, to be honest. So um, for me, Jediism is as much as a spiritual faith as it is um, an everyday choice and mentality and belief practice and, and way of life. So to me, uh, I was already doing it. I just found Jediism. I was like, hey, that's me. There's other people who are me. So, yeah, the the cloak helps me find people who are like me. Still muted, I think. I'm using okay. my phone and I'm using my keyboard with it and it's not working very well. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right. Um, anyone else want to share? About their I robes. thought Druid was going to share, but he lowered his hand. Oh, no, he did. He didn't share. No, what? Did he? Oh. Mm -hmm. I, did, I guess he left his hand up. Okay. Yeah, I so, accidentally um... left my hand up. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I thought there was more to go. Uh, So I'm going to actually share my screen if I can figure out how to. <laughs> um. Ignore some of the faux pas decisions I made for Halloween. We can't see you. <laughs> I know. Here it is. So just kind of ignore some of the things that I did for Halloween. <laughs> like I wore uh, something to keep warm underneath and I did not wear boots. <clears throat> um, because I couldn't find my boots last minute <laughs> when I was going I like out. Jfed um tabard is that a tabard? I like your Jfed tabard. Was, yes. So okay, I actually have some uh, things to to say on this. So this these robes were actually built for me by a Jedi. Uh, she gifted them to me after I got my knighthood over at Temple of the Jedi Order. 
and um, they are beautiful. I love them. Um, I probably should have ironed them a little bit more before I went out, but I didn't uh, I couldn't find a good place to iron them. I live in a small apartment. But uh, so the belt there is actually a Ahsoka belt and it's got beads on it. I am eventually going to replace those beads with um, some other beads that is going to be part of a Jedi tradition that we're going to start up at the physical Jedi gathering soon. Um, get a bead for every class that you attend, workshop you attend. It'd be kind of cool if we could do that for these winter gatherings, but I don't know how to pull that off unless everybody wants to give me their addresses or I can tell you which bead to go out and buy, I suppose, if you attend. Um, but anyway, so that's that. When I got master at International Jedi Federation, the tabards, um, I've actually given a gift to each person who gets master, a set of tabards that they can use. And my mother actually embroiders these. So um, my mom actually helped me embroider this one after I got my master at IJF. And the specific colors, remember I told you that it's purple is for mystic. When I mentioned my lightsaber, that is the, that means that I am a master Jedi mystic. And uh, so we have different colors for the different ones, but all together, that's basically what mine is. I still need to get a, uh, a cloak. I guess it's a cloak. Is that the right word for it? A over robe? But um, yep, there's, there's mine. I'm going to stop sharing. Just shut up. I'm talking and babbling. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. Those are really beautiful robes. I love that the tabard is embroidered too. That's something I'd like to do with my winter robes. Can you share it just really quickly one more time? Sorry, I had to run out my geese for squawking. I wasn't sure it was going on. Uh, one second. There we go. There's my robes. My son actually oh. got some robes himself um, nice. for Thanks. Halloween. But yeah. So like Very I said, nice. ignore some of the faux pas things that I do, like not wearing boots and, and wearing this underneath for, for warmth. But yeah. You got to be practical, right? Yes. Yes. You, you do have to be practical. So uh, my to keep warm, I think that the, the next phase would just be to make it all come together is to actually get... Uh, what do you call it? Is it a cape? It's not a cape. A cloak? Well, there's, there's different things. There's, th there are capes. A cape, cape basically would be no hood, right? And it would just be on the back and it would be tied. And then a cloak is, well, there's different types of cloaks, really. There's full circle cloaks, which are, you know, run giant circle. Then there's different types. Game of Thrones cloaks. Yeah, they're all different types of them. And then there's robes, right? And so it, it depends on what you want. Uh, I guess. Okay, yeah. Pa ponchos, you know, really a poncho is just a cloak or a robe. It's just, it, it's the way, it, it's like a big blanket too, I guess. It's like a snuggie. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Oh, how you want it to look. That'll be the next thing. We'll see a snuggie Jedi. That'll be the next one. A snuggie Jedi. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I feel like, uh, honestly, like being more practical about it having those warm layers and comfy shoes is actually way more jedi than trying to look <laughs> right like Sweet. honestly the shoes that i wear with mine are these they're just sketchers but they're comfortable and they have this amazing grip so yeah i feel like that's even though like the jedi and the lore wear a certain thing like it's the most practical for them so so We're the biggest thing of the lesson that Octavia huh? was just kind of hitting on with this lesson, the point is to have a reason why. It looks cool is not a reason why. If it is practical or means something to you or says something about you, that's a reason why. 
I look like a badass is not the correct answer. I love my family and my friends. That's what mine says about me. There you go. Yeah, so we got about 10 minutes till the next presentation. It's Night V with uh, Jedi Perspectives. And I definitely recommend you all go to that. Um, I did want to kind of close the workshop um, by saying, if you haven't explored your lightsaber color and the meaning to you, um, I definitely challenge you to do that. Uh, look on YouTube and find out what the lore and the legends say and maybe even just write about it journal about it see if there's something that you relate to and it might take a while it definitely took me I think I was like 13 when I found the color I wanted and I didn't know why until recently um as far as robes go it's kind of what's available to you and it doesn't have to look like what the Jedi look like in the movies it can be a t-shirt and some jeans if that's what you feel comfortable and it is all about being practical and what's important to you the other thing that's a part of uh, the lesson that Master Zero gives is the um, combat styles, which I think is a super fascinating thing. Um, you can find YouTube videos about it. You can search on Google. So in the realist Jedi community, we're not actually like going out and fighting wars or anything like that. Um, you know, I kind of explained why Sarisu was important to me. And I think that finding a movement and a meditation and something you can relate to that is helpful to you in the real world is a way that you can kind of relate to those combat styles and the characters that use them the most. Um, another thing that I wanted to share too is the Padawan braid that you were talking about um, at the very beginning before we started recording. So this is something that Master Zero's apprentices have, I don't know if all of them have done them, but the current ones are doing them now. And so I chose to dye my braid in rainbow colors. And that symbolizes the kind of in-between uh, perspective that I have, that I don't believe in a light or dark side of the force, that I believe that there's many different colors on the spectrum it's all situational and it all depends on who and what is going on um i added some little ferns to it and i think that that's kind of how davy was talking about the green for his lightsaber so outside of the robes the lightsabers the combat styles there can be many things that you found on your jedi path that you really connect to things that are important to you a symbol, an object, it's really important to focus on the meaning of those things. And I challenge all of you to journal about them, write about it, share it with other people in the community. The more meaning that you're able to give to those symbols, to those things in your life, the more value they'll have and the more you're going to learn from them.